Hi, it's Claudia from Create with Claudia. Thanks so much for stopping by. Stick around because it's almost Mother's Day and we're doing something special for moms. Alrighty, today it's all about moms and giving them a little something special. This is going to be a wall hanging or a mini quilt. It's 12 and a half inches and it's going to say mom on it. Very easy to do and great for your scraps. You know I love doing those scrappy projects. This is episode number 12 of working our scraps off. I can't believe it. And I, I figured I was in a pink mood. It's springtime, things are getting warmer. And with mom, I just felt like doing pinks today. And I don't think I've done a project. I'm trying to remember if any of mine have been in all pinks. So we're going all pink today um, in honor of moms. So I've pulled out some scraps. I'm gonna put these aside and I'm gonna tell you how and show you, excuse me, how we're gonna make this mom wall hanging or mini quilt. Okay, so let's go over the fabric we're gonna need. And there are a lot of different cuts. Uh, there are three letters to make, M, O, and then another M. So I'm going to show you how to make one M, and then I'll make the other one, and um, then I'll show you how to make the O, and then I'll show you how to put it all together. But for the border and sort of the dividers, for the and I call this the background fabric, and in this case I'm using this sort of pale, this cream color with some pale coral flowers, you are going to need two strips Cut two and a half inches by 26 and a half inches. These are long ones, so this might not be in your scrap box, but you never know. I don't, it depends on your size of your scrap box. So two of those, two, inch, two and a half inches by 26 and a half inches. Two strips cut two and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. This is all that background fabric. And lastly, for those borders and the dividers, two strips cut two and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So that's of the border and the dividers. So that's that fabric. Now we're gonna do the M's. For the M's, and I'm gonna show you one, and you're gonna need the same, because it's mom, so you're gonna need two M's. You need the following. In the fabric you want the letter to be in, you need two, two strips cut two and a half inches by eight and a half inches, okay? You need two strips and I'm looking at my notes here, sorry, I keep glancing away because I, I don't want to tell you the wrong measurements, but you need two strips cut two and a half inches by four and a half inches, okay? And I promise you this will all come together and look like the letter M. And still on that fabric that is the letter that you want, you need two squares cut two and a half inches by two and a half inches. And then going back to that background fabric, because you're gonna need some in your letter M, you need two strips cut two and a half inches by four and a half inches, and two squares cut two and a half inches by two and a half inches. And that's for one letter M. And then you need the same amount for another letter M. And you can see I used two different pinks here, but they're, so it's, you still get a lot of that scrappy look. And then for the O, you need the following. And again, I use three different pinks for my letters. You need two strips cut two and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And that's in the fabric that you want your O to be in. You also need from that fabric two squares cut two and a half inches. And then lastly, you need one strip cut two and a half inches by four and a half inches. And that's for the letter O. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you how to put together one letter M. I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to do an O and then the M and we will get going on this mom uh, mini quilt. Okay, so for the letter M, you're gonna need this two times. The first thing you wanna do is prepare your strips, these little four and a half inch strips. And that those are easy to do. One, you're gonna leave plain. You're not gonna do, do anything to. But the other one you need to make into like a flying geese unit. And to do that, you're gonna take two of those background squares and you're gonna draw a diagonal line on them with a ruler and a pencil or a, a fabric marking tool. Just draw that line. Normally I won't use pencil, but in this case I will. Pencil is notoriously, it will not come out of fabric and I have been burned, I ruined a quilt that way. I still hang it because it was for my husband and he really likes it. And honestly, he doesn't even notice it, but boy, do I notice those pencil marks. But anyway, so the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna line up one of these squares that you drew the diagonal on 
to one end of one of those four and a half inches square, uh, four and a half by two and a half inch strips, excuse me, one end, nice and make sure that that diagonal line you drew is pointing towards the center. And you're gonna stitch on that line, you're gonna stitch on that drawn line from one corner to the other. And I meant to, forgot to mention, you want to put these right sides together. Alrighty, so here it is. Uh, you can see I stitched right, I actually stitched a hair towards the corner, towards the outside of it. That gives me a little more wiggle room. Uh, I like to do that instead of just right directly on the line. But anyway, I'm gonna do this. I'm, what I'm gonna do now is move that out of the way and I'm gonna trim this section away, this outer section away, leaving a quarter inch of fabric Always close that up. I have been cut on that. It's not fun. And then you're going to take this over to your pressing service and then press that out to the outside. So now you have this that looks like that. And then we're going to add this other one that we drew the line on, this other background fabric, lining it up on the other end, making sure again that that drawn line points towards the center or towards that angle like that. And so on that drawn line, There we go, and then I'm just gonna trim away that excess and press it to the outside. All right, so there we have one unit, one part of this. We're gonna do the same thing now with one of these background squares and two of the letter M fabrics that we're using. So I'm gonna draw that line exactly the same as we did on this. So when I come back, it'll look like this just with the fabrics reversed. All right, so here we go. Here are these two. You can see how they're opposite colors. And now we're gonna start assembling this. So let's see, I'm gonna rotate these around. Let me see. I need to look at my little diagram here off to the side so you guys don't see it. <laughs> um, uh, this is what we're gonna do. Whoops. All right, we're gonna put, we're gonna do them like this, the, assemble them like this. So there's your background with those two of the letter M fabrics. Then you're gonna put that two and a half inch by four and a half strip, inch strip in the middle. And then you have this one on the bottom. You can sort of see that's gonna be the center of your M. And then you put that other background square on the bottom. So you're gonna assemble this center section first. And I would just, you know, I'm gonna do this like so. I'm gonna line right sides together and I highly recommend with get, ignoring all those extra threads. My sewing machine's not happy today. I don't know what's going on. I think I need, it probably needs a good cleaning is what it needs. <laughs> anyway, I would, you can sew on this side if you want, just, you know, having that facing up, but I would sew with this side facing up because if you look, you can see where um, those two seams intersect. If you sew right on or just a hair above it towards this side, towards this outside, you will get a nice sharp point. So that's my that's a little tip for you. And I will do that on this side and then on this one as well and then we'll sew that those two together as well so we have one long center unit. All right, so there's that center section sewn together. And then, fingers crossed, that should measure 12 and a half, and it does, whew. I'm always a little nervous. It's not a little short on this side. I don't know what I did here. I must have tweaked it a little bit, but that's okay. We can just use a little, I have to look at that a little bit <laughs> and then fix that. It's no big deal. Well, I'll just pin it and we'll fix it. But there's gonna be your M. So I'm gonna add this strip to this side and this strip to this side, and then you'll see how that turns out. And then I'm gonna make the other M and then we'll get going on the O.
Okay, so I'm gonna do the O, but I think I might have misspoken when I said that these were 12 and a half inches. They're eight and a half inches long strips. Pardon me, I'm sorry about that, and I will fix that when I'm posting the video and everything. But that's eight and a half. So for the O's, for an O, you need two of those, those two eight and a half inch by two and a half inch strips, and the two two and a half inch squares, and you're gonna lay, it gets laid out like this. So the first thing you have to do, this is really simple sewing, add one of these squares to this end and one square to this end using that quarter inch seam allowance. And then we add the two strips on the side, but I'm gonna do this first. All right. So here we go, that center strip is done and now you're gonna add this one long strip to this side and this one to this side and we'll have our O. Alrighty, there's your O. How cute is that? Very simple to make. I mean, come on, this is easy, this is easy uh, quilting right here. Uh, so I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna do really quickly that other M while uh, I'll just sort of fast forward while you're so you can see it, but uh, that'll be another easy one. And then we're gonna assemble the entire quilt top together. Okay, so I had to adjust a few things around just a little bit. This is a long, long runner or long uh, mini quilt. So we're gonna spell out the words mom. Hopefully it's long enough. We're gonna leave a little gap in between. Uh, there we go. And then we're gonna take those background eight and a half inch long strips. And those are gonna go in the middle like as a divider like so and like so. You can see it coming together. Let me pull it down a little bit. I, I, can, I have a monitor so I can see. And sometimes my, I'm space challenged. It's not so easy always to get this going the right way. Let me move it down a little bit more. Sorry about this. Anyway, you're gonna do it like so. Move it over. And then the next, so you're gonna sew this together, the center part first. So I'm gonna sew the M to this divider this to this, and then here to here, and then sew that all together so you have the center part that says mom. And I'm gonna do that really quickly, and then we'll go ahead and add on the top and bottom strips, and then the long ends. All right, now you can really see it coming together. There you go. Here it is, mom. <laughs> you can always, I just realized you could do it wow too if you wanted to do that instead of mom. Up to you, but there's your mom. Um, and uh, now we're gonna put on these, the long strips. These were the ones that were 26 and a half inches long, two and a half inches, and fingers crossed they fit and they should. You're gonna maybe you have to stretch it just a little bit. I'm gonna put one on the top one on the bottom, and when I come back, the last thing we need to do is add the strips on the sides. And also, let me point out, on this one, you definitely wanna pin and get that nice straight seam, so it's a nice, nice end up, you get a nice straight seam on each end.
Alrighty, it's almost done. At least the top is, excuse the, the mini quilt top is. You can see it coming together. And the last thing is these 12 and a half inch strips on each end, very easy. I, you know, when I make videos, I actually sometimes have to retake a lot of shots. And this, I'm going on about two hours for this, maybe one and a half hours. And that was, I had, I had to recut something and everything. So this is a really fast project. You can do this very easily in an afternoon um, and get and use up your scraps. But anyway, let me go ahead. I'm gonna place these right sides together, add these on each end, and then I'm gonna show you how I will quilt this. Alrighty, so here it is. The top is finished. Now, what I will do is I cut some backing and I need to cut it a little bit bigger. I'm actually gonna self bind this. So I'm gonna bind it from the back. I'll show you how I do that. It's very easy to do, um, but you need batting and backing and then you're gonna quilt it. And I'm probably just gonna, for purposes of today, I'm just gonna do some real easy straight line stitching just to get this going quickly. Um, but I do need to adjust my machine and then uh, we'll get going on that. But basically I cut a piece of backing fabric, some more pink scraps, this is for actually from my stash. I cut it about, um, what did I cut it? About 32, 33 inches. So you have a nice little overhang on the side. I like a generous overhang. And then about 15 or 16 inches uh, in width. And then what I say about 34 inches, 35 inches in length. And you'll notice I did not pin base this. Normally I would, but I used Hobbs fusible batting awesome for a project like this so it doesn't slip and slide. You've seen if you watch this uh, series, it's a, a monthly series, a lot of times I don't baste it all and I don't use the fusible, uh, but I've really gotten used to using this fusible. I love it for projects like this because um, I really don't like to pin baste much. I've said it before, I have problems with this hand so p basting is really hard for me. But what I'm going to do is just some very simple straight line quilting. I'm not going to do a whole lot, not real heavy on this one. And then I'll show you, and uh, then I'll bind it for you. So I'm going to stop here because I went on and on about how I was going to use the back of the um, the backing to roll it forward and do just some machine uh, binding. And as I said, you got to be real careful with the backing. So I'm, I'm going to show you I sliced right through it, as you can see right here. Hopefully you can see it over here. Um, so scratch that. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to be using the backing for the binding. I'm going to trim this up really nicely and then going to go ahead and use two and a half inch strip binding. Um, I have some already. I had some from a scrappy project I had done earlier. Let me see if I can find that. Okay, here it is. I have some left over from another project and I'm just going to use that. It sort of matches. It has a little bit of some yellow in it. I don't really care. It's just the binding. I think it'll be pretty. I'll add a little color to it. So you make lemons from lemonade and doggone it. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I cut right through it and that happens sometimes and you're just going to have to make the best of it. Um, but so I'm going to trim this up better and this time I, I'm going to uh, use regular two inch binding. What I do, I'm not going to show you how I do that. Um, I'll, I'll do that separately off camera. I make two and a half inch strips and then I like scrappy binding. So I'll piece them together on the diagonal fold them over and press them. I fold them over in half and press them. And then that's how I make my binding. And I'll sew that to the front. And then by hand, I'll sew it by machine to the front. And then by hand, I'll stitch it onto the back. Um, and again, you're just making lemon out of lemonades to, uh, lemons out of lemonade <laughs> today. I can't believe I did that. Um, it just goes to show you that mistakes happen all the time in quilting. So let me go ahead and fix this up. And when I come back, it should be done <laughs> with binding on it and um, hopefully no more mistakes.
Okay, I am back. I'm going to just show you this. I didn't hand stitch the binding on the back yet. I'm going to do that later after I turn the video off. I need a break after thoroughly embarrassing myself and messing up the uh, the, the uh, binding that I was going to do. But luckily, I do keep all of... I make really long bindings and I always have extra. And so I actually had some that I think matches really well. It's got some yellow, coral, and purples in it. And here is how the mom uh, mini quilt or wall hanging turned out. I, I just think it's really sweet. I think moms will love it. Anybody's mom will love it, um, or your daughter, grandmother, granddaughter, you know, whatever. Um, it's just a lot of fun to make. And if you don't want to say mom, <laughs> you could always, I realize that too, flip it over and you can say wow. So there you go. And you can make it in any color. But I love about this project, this is another one. Um, it's just scrappy and I'm using up this, in this case, my pink scraps. This is episode number 12 of Working Our Scraps Off. This is a YouTube series only that I've done. I, I do have an accompanying blog, but I don't go into a lot of details on that. Um, it's a YouTube series that I do once a month. I try to do a video once a month of a scrappy and free project. Sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller. They're all kinds of things. If there's something in particular that you'd like to see, go ahead and drop me a line in the comments. I also have a very active and fun fa Facebook group called Working Our Scraps Off, and that link will be in the description of the video as well. Uh, lots of people post lots of scrappy quilts and projects that they're working on, and they're just, it's always so inspiring. There's so many beautiful projects. And I always post um, my monthly video in there as well, sort of as the each month goes by, and people show me uh, versions that they've done of my projects as well. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. I always appreciate new subscribers. Thank you so much. I am also on social media. Also, make sure to hit that bell. That way you're always notified when I put out a new video. I try to post videos every week. I'm not always successful, but I try pretty hard. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Working Our Scraps Off, the mom mini wall hanging, wall hanging or mini quill, whatever you want to call it. Um, thank you so much for stopping by and have a great day.